Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you got gas, the morning edition. How are you doing today? You know, we talk about certain things with cars, but have we ever talked about why you like cars? Why did you get into the car hobby? Why do you have this passion, or, well, whatever you want to call it, for the four-wheel mode of transportation, and you use it for something other than just transportation? Good morning to you. I'm Hot Rod Bob. Thanks for joining Gas this morning. Hey, Bill, how are you doing? I see a bunch of people up here at the top, and their names coming across. Lucky Lou Geisen, hope you're feeling better, guy. Cassie Nunez as well. All right, so I got into cars for some unknown reason. Nobody in my family is a car nut. Nobody in my family loves cars as I do. Well, except maybe my younger son. He's gotten somewhat there, but he's gone into a different direction. He actually goes off-roading, and he's got a great Jeep that he does that with. So Scotty's out there cruising on the off-road. Now, I've done that a couple of times, but it wasn't really my forte. Now, I know my father wanted to steer me away from cars. Uh, he was a truck driver. He didn't want me to be a truck driver like he was. Now, I'm not an over-the-road truck driver. He did deliveries. And he wanted me to do something different with my life. Now, Cassie Nunez, she was born around hot rods. And, uh, you know, her mom, her dad, her, that's what her dad does for a living. And her mom just as car crazy as she and her dad are. As Our sister is, too. And you see her on a, a special TV show as well. And Cassie, I'm sure, will post the name of that for me because I've forgotten. It, I, know, I remember Rust to Riches, but I don't remember what the beginning name of that was. So Cassie's definitely involved in that. Bobby Dye is a car crazy guy too. And boy, has he got a bunch of great cars up there with him and uh, love his wagon. He, he's he got a couple. He's got a Ford wagon. He's got this great little Rambler that is fantastic. He, uh, he took me around for that one time, picked me up in a Studebaker one time from the airport when we were doing a good guys event up in, uh, where the heck were we, Bobby? I don't remember. We've been so many places together with the good guys and such. Danny Santos is watching, and his family got him involved. Cassie Nunez, Car Masters, Rust to Riches on Netflix is where Cassie Nunez's sister can be seen, and she is the, the female host of the show. And it's a great show. Got to watch it when you get a chance. Jason Hill, Jill, and Danny Sanders. Danny definitely got it from his parents, both his mom and dad were award-winning drag racers, and he's definitely a uh, part of that. Chuck Knoll, he's a car guy, too, and also motorcycles. He likes two wheels. I did, too, and I really do like motorcycles. I just don't feel the need to ride one any longer. You need to watch the Mustang episode uh, for on Netflix. Okay, we will do that. Neil Panks, how are you doing over there in the U.K.? Neil gave me some bad news this morning. Actually, we, I kind of already know, knew that Dragstalgia, the biggest nostalgia drag racing event in the United Kingdom, has been canceled because of the uh, COVID-19 issues. So, Neil, sorry I'm not going to get over there to see you again this time. Uh, maybe next year. We'll see what happens, and you never know. We may get together for uh, the Hall of Fame again. Who knows? Tom Jantz watching us, too. Tom, another car crazy guy from the Road Kings Car Club in Burbank. The Road Kings Car Club started out in 1952 and was a group of guys that were dedicated to drag racing. And uh, they are still going strong with over 100 members today. Well, good morning to you guys. And uh, oh, and Lou Geisen's out in the desert drying out. Yeah, well, too bad for the wife. You're really going to be bugging her, aren't you? Richard Turner's here. His family tells... The words of they were Buick. The first words from your mouth were Buick. All right, that's cool. Hot August Nights canceled now. Initially, they said it was going to go on again, and then they said it's off again, and then same thing with Woodward Dream Cruise, and now that's canceled again. But what made you go into cars? Now, for me, I just had a love of things. Don't know why. My neighbor across the street, I've said, was uh, into sports cars. When he came back in the service from Europe, he brought back with him a sportster or speedster, a Porsche speedster, and I thought that was great. Uh, my cousin had a Triumph TR3. That was my first ride in a sports car, and it led me to buy a TR3 when I was old enough 
and uh, could afford one. And I did, and I had four of them. I've had old cars. I've had cars featured in magazines. Lucky. I, I mean, I feel really blessed and lucky because some of the things I've done in the car industry or hobby have been noticed. Uh, my car was a centerfold in a book called Nifty 50 Fords, a book about Fords of the 50s. My 1951 Ford, prominent, right there in the middle, a two-page centerfold spread. Yeah, I can say I was a centerfold. Well, my car was anyway. I've been in other magazines, too, from the Peterson Publishing Company, complete book of Fords a couple of times, complete book of engine swaps, and I did a, a V8 swap into an early Ford Econoline van. Uh, also paint. Bill Carter did the pinstriping and styling of my van. It ended up in a book by Peterson, complete book of paint and bodywork. I've had other cars in magazines, and I've been lucky enough to be able to be a writer for a number of magazines, from the Good Guys Good Times Gazette to uh, Old School Rods, and now Rotting USA. And I'm just loving it. I'm living the dream. I'm part of the hobby and love it. I've also worked on the OEM side. I worked for the factories. I worked for uh, for BMW, Nissan, GM, Isuzu. I've been part of this industry in from the hobbyist side to the professional side as long as I can remember. My first job in the auto industry, like many guys, I was pumping gas at a gas station and uh, learned a lot there. Uh, I learned a lot about working on cars. Went to school, learned all I could in high school about working on cars. Went to, uh, took auto shop, metal shop, electrical shop. Look, at, took them all. Machine shop even. I became uh, basically enough to, to go in as a entry-level machinist. But that's that. That's the past. Hello, Tom. And Lou's recuperating. Well, you're doing good. You're you're not rehabbing, you're recuperating. Yes, I understand. I, I, I know that. I know that. And I know you're recuperating. I'm glad. Ron Freeze, how are you doing this morning? You doing all right? Good. But the car hobby has uh, led me to make a lot of friends. Neil Panks, who's watching us right now in Great Britain. Uh, I've made friends all over the world. We'll see Raphael here from Italy in just a moment. We've had people from Bahrain, from Spain. And uh, I get to do a, sh a, a chat show with a car club called the Gentleman's Driving Club out of Mallorca, Spain. And we do that on Mondays. So it's, uh, it's led me to meet so many varied people and some of my heroes as well. The people that made the history, a lot of them, I've gotten to meet Ed the Ace McCullough, Steve Gibbs, Don Garlitz, Bob Moravis, a.k.a. Floyd Lippincott Jr., Richard Petty. Met him when I was working for Stock Car Magazine back in the 70s, and we were covering the opening race at Riverside, Cale Yarbrough, uh, Petty, and a whole bunch of guys. I've been able to meet some of them here working at Irwindale. Billy Gibbons, rock star. Got a cool bunch of cars. Got to meet him at Irwindale. The guys from uh, Wheeler Dealers, both of them. All three of them, actually. And the staff. We, we've been in their studio. Uh, it's it just, it's been amazing for me to live the life I have, loving cars, and making it not only my hobby, my job, but my life. And uh, people like Cassie, same way. She's met a whole lot of people, and she raises money because of that with her charity car shows. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they're not going on anymore uh, this year. Uh, so we'll see if that all picks up next year. Jack French, how are you doing? And Robert, how are you this morning? So we've got lots of things to do with cars. I'm going on car cruises again. We're actually driving our cars. Now, we can't park, so to speak. You have to maintain your social distancing. So we do car cruises. We actually drive our cars. Now, this is more reminiscent of what I did when I was into the vans. We would go on cruises. Whole lineup of vans. Lead guy had a CB, someone in the middle. Well, we all had CBs. And then there was someone in the back. And we made sure we all step, uh, stayed together. Hi, Kyle. How are you doing today? Hey, Kyle is watching us. Ballinger. We went on cruises. We'd end up at a park. We'd end up at the beach. 
We'd end up all over the place. All right, Bobby Dye says, I wallpapered my entire bedroom when I was 10 years old with Life magazine car ads from the 30s and the 50s and drooled over them. The neighbors' hot rods early on. The neighbors' hot rods early on. All right, model car car shows. Yes, and through model cars, I met Tommy Ivo, TV Tommy Ivo. I was 11 years old, and I built a model car for a car show at the local hobby shop, and he was the judge. That was cool. And it was probably one of the few times that Tommy had people actually looking up to him physically. That's a joke. Never mind. Now, Tommy's a cool guy, and I see him here in Burbank all the time. Uh, Cassie Nunez says, you're going to the cruise and see me on Saturday. No, I'm not. Uh, sorry, Cassie. I'm going to be uh, doing something else this weekend. Uh, it's going to be a car event. Well, kind of. It's a car cruise, kind of. But it, it's not a organized type cruise. We're actually going to gonna visit some, some relatives. So we're driving a bit. We're going to be driving a lot. We're getting plans, though, together for Bonneville this year. Apparently, Bonneville is still on. Now, for those of you noticing, I've got my Irwindale shirt on. Hi, Peg. How are you doing? Irwindale just announced they are doing track rentals. Seven days a week. You can get in there. $2,500 rents the track. You can have as much fun as you want. Get a bunch of guys together. Talk to Steve Sherman here on Facebook. Get in touch with him. Get in touch with the track directly. They're doing track rentals. Can't have spectators yet. Now, one track in North Carolina tried that. They said these aren't spectators. These are protesters. Well, it didn't go over well with their governor. So uh, the track's been shut down by the state because uh, apparently you can't protest and enjoy yourself watching race cars, but you can protest burning buildings. That's okay. Now, never mind. So much for the soapbox. All right. Alan Gunnick says he's built over 70 model cars, but Age 9 also won Revell contest back in the 80s. And I believe the contest that I entered was also a Revell contest or something. But Tommy Ivo was the judge. And he'd come out to this hobby shop on Van Nuys Boulevard in Panorama City. And he judged the cars. I mean, it was he was the first TV star I ever met. And uh, not that he remembers that because, you know, heck, back then I was just a little pipsqueak. And, you know, he saw so many people. But today... I can say I know Tommy. We're in the same car club. Uh, lived around the corner from him for a while in beautiful downtown Burbank. And it was great to see his transporter out in front the year he retired from racing. And it sat there, and I took my kid over to see it, and it was cool. But I love cars. I love all things about cars. Now, I'm not necessarily the best hands-on guy. I can work on my cars. I know I have the knowledge to work on my cars. I don't necessarily have the motivation any longer. There were times that I could spend all day working on a car. Now, the other day I was working on the 57, uh, put new carpeting in, put a whole new carpeting kit in. I've got the stuff to finish it up sometime this week, uh, putting in crow racing style seat belts. Uh, got to put the seat back in, kind of cleaned up the sill plates, got the carpeting in place. Got the seat belt mounts in place. Got to tighten them up a little bit. Put the seat back in. And, hey, it'll have carpeting for the first time in probably 10 years. My son uh, had this 57 Ford as his daily driver when he was in high school. He was the cool kid on the block. And now I've got the car. And we're going through it. We're getting it back back up and in shape. Uh, it's It's been good. VHS Valley Head Service did the motor, and it purrs. He, my son had the transmission rebuilt. It's cool, and it is just a nice cruiser. So we're going to get that thing going, and uh, we got a cruise coming up Father's Day weekend here in Oxnard, California, and we're probably going to take the 57 out and, and cruise it that night. You never know what'll, what you'll see out there. So if you want, come on out, Saviors Boulevard, starting at about 5 p.m. on June 21st. All right, lots of car stuff going on. Alan's still building those model cars. Let's see. Again, it's not scrolling, so I'm not seeing your uh, stuff. Every car guy's obsession starts with 99-cent Hot Wheels. Mm, not necessarily, Cassie. They weren't around yet. But I did have Matchbox cars. They predated Hot Wheels. Jerry Weedle, how are you doing? 
or Whittle. Joey, how are you doing? Alan, met Jack Davis, hooker, headers through model cars. Jerry Burwell, build some great cars at a shop down in Whittier. Danny Sanders, his dad got him involved with pedal cars. Yeah. Yeah, I did the same thing. I bought my son a pedal car when he was two years old for his birthday. I found it at a swap meet, at the Pate swap meet in outside Dallas, and restored it for him, gave it to him when he was two years old. I have that car in my garage. I'm going to redo it, and uh, it's going to be for his kids as soon as I get it done. Now, he used to push you around with a broom handle before you could reach the pedals. Now, what I did with my son is I tied a rope around the steering column, then around my waist. Instead of bringing a stroller, we had his pedal car with a trailer. And in the trailer, we could put our brochures or snacks and what have you and drinks and so forth. And I would pull my son in his little uh, pedal car. And we started this long before the, the pedal car and the, the car uh, carriage craze came about. We were doing this back, oh gosh, 1990, 1991 era is when we started, and my son would be part of the show. As a matter of fact, there was an organization called the Western Street Rod Association that was doing a, an ad for automotive insurance or hot rod insurance, and my son and his pedal car were prominently displayed in that ad back then. I'd, I'd love to try and find it. I, ha I haven't seen it in a long time. I had the book someplace. Alan says he also organized the model show at the Peterson yeah, you know, it's a great place, and you meet some celebrities there, too. The slot car club I belong to, and I've been racing slot cars now since I'm about 10 years old, 11 years old. Um, we did a charity race with seven slot car tracks all set up at the same time. Huge tracks at the Peterson Museum when they had the big canopy or tent upstairs on the parking lot. So we set up a thing for uh, one of the charities, and we ended up having top Le Mans drivers, real Le Mans drivers, winners, came out, and we had special cars for them, and they raced. Cassie is saying her sister worked on a car that's in the Peterson. Well, cool. Have to tell us what about it. Danny Santos says, Hot Wheels for me. Yeah, he was a 70s kid. Yeah, by the 70s, I was, um, I was already, I was, uh, let's see, 70s, just getting out of college. Got my first job as an auto shop teacher. So like I said, I've been involved in the hobby, the sport, the industry in itself for as long as I can remember. And uh, love cars. Always will. Always have. But my house is just like a, a mini museum between the artwork, the things on the shelf, the books. I've got well over 200 books, and I've read each and every one of them. I don't remember them, but I've, I've read a lot of them. Larry Mulhauser, how are you doing this morning? So what is it that brought you to cars? What is it that keeps you involved in cars? Alan Gunnick, Dinky and Corgi. Yeah, those are the those are the original cars, the little small cars. The Dinky and the Corgi diecast, they predate Matchbox and Hot Wheels. They are the ones. Cassie Nunez says it's a Plymouth concept car they built on Car Masters, so we'll have to watch the show. Denny says his next door neighbor in Long Beach until he was five years old got him involved. Jerry Norick, who had a fuel roadster, lots of car influences that got me in hooked. Yeah, when I lived in Van Nuys, uh, I was uh, 11 years old and we moved to Van Nuys, California. I lived on Van Nuys Boulevard across the street from the General Motors plant. And around the corner were a bunch of body shops and car shops. And a lot of them were doing custom car work. And I can remember loving what they were doing. I saw them sectioning a 50 Ford. That was great. They pancaked the hood. They put in 59 Chevy headlights on an angle. I was just enamored with that. I'd hung around that. I used to go over to Barris's shop. I lived in North Hollywood when I first moved to California. Found out Barris' shop was there in North Hollywood as well. And I can remember walking from my house, which was a couple of miles away, and just staring in the window. I never had the gumption to go in, introduce myself, and become friends with George. And I, I kind of regret that. So if you ever get the opportunity to meet and greet with someone who you idolize or know in the hobby or the business, don't feel 
a shame to go up and meet and greet and talk to them. Kyle says, Hot Wheels and my dad's stories about the cars of the 50s. Yeah. You know, the first race I went to see, actually, was a televised in a movie uh, house at a theater. And it was the Indy 500 in 1962, I believe it was. And I lived in North Hollywood. I went to the theater in North Hollywood on Lancashire Boulevard and saw the Indy 500 on the big screen. They had some special thing they were doing. And that got me hooked on racing. Now, before that, I wasn't, I didn't see racing anywhere. Uh, I didn't know about racing. We didn't watch it on TV. But the other thing I started doing and watching on TV was the jalopy races here in Southern California at Ascot Raceway. And they were on Sundays right here in Southern California. And I remember watching them and enjoying them. I got to go to Ascot when I was 16 years old. That was the first time I'd been there. The first race I went to, the actual race, was I was 13 years old, or 14, and went to the Riverside 500 NASCAR race. Sat in turn six, had an amazing view. And for the next five or six years, I was there every year. Danny Santos, they had Larry Dixon Sr. on the block in North Hollywood. And he's still friends with Larry Jr. and Kathy. Yeah, they're, they're cool people. Larry Jr., uh an honorary member, I believe, of the Road Kings Car Club. And I know uh, Senior moved back to Indiana where Junior lives. And Junior went back there when he was driving. Uh, Love to get back to California. But they are where they need to be right now. So I've got to meet a lot of drivers. Got to meet a lot of people. Uh, Peter Brock, the man who originally penned the 63 Corvette, designed the Cobra Coupe, worked for Shelby American, Ran the B A the, the yeah, Brock Racing B R E, Datsun Racing Team. I got to meet him when I worked for Nissan. He came out for one of the events. His driver. Uh, I got to meet the drivers that drove those five tens that dominated the under two liter Trans Am series for three years. Got to meet Peter. Got to be got to to chat with him at his home. And have had the opportunity to interview him and Alan Grant, both of the Shelby American team. Uh, I can't say enough about the enjoyment I've had being in the car industry and being around all the people that have made this industry what it is today. All right, so post on my page how you got into cars, why you're still into cars, and uh, put your picture of your car up there, too, if you got a cool one. Do it. Enjoy it. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've had gas. The morning edition. Don't forget, you can subscribe to our YouTube channels. We've got two talking about, well, we've got you know, two tired guys, T-O-O, tired guys. Don't go T-W-O. T-W-O doesn't work. T-O-O, two tired guys on YouTube and gas. Great American Auto Scene, Bob Beck on YouTube. It's free. Subscribe to our YouTube channels. Like, share, and let people know about gas. The morning edition. Take care, and I'll try and be back next Tuesday night for an evening edition, a full hour long, and we'll try and get some uh, good guests on. Alan Godek says he was a flagman on the Riverside when it was 16 or 17 years old, and he flagged the IROC Porsche series. Oh, that's great. That's, that's the thing to do. All right, guys, you have a great day. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas. Brought to you by Beach Underwriting, Moon Eyes, Irwindale Speedway. Irwindale Drag Strip and Service Tech. Thanks for tuning in. You have a great day. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you have gas. Uh, you you got gas. You had gas. Oh, you're a gasaholic. Take care now.